So, Mia, uh, what could all of this mean for the up-and-coming space tourism industry? Yeah, hi. Good morning, Olivia. Yeah, the most recent tragic events really raises questions about, number one, the viability of space tourism, but also just what's going to happen from here on up, the time frame. I spoke to Marco Ciceris. He's a space analyst at the Teal Group, and he said, because we're talking about Richard Branson's company having this huge issue, well, that is going to essentially set back the industry one to three years. Now, he's a lot more optimistic than another analyst named Michael Blades at uh, Frost & Sullivan who says this industry is going to get set back some three to five years. I mean, regardless, a couple issues need to really be ironed out. Number one, safety standards need to be clearly delineated. Number two, more tests need to be done. In the Virgin Galactic flight, this was just the fourth time the rocket was tested, and they had this lofty goal of going up as early as in a couple of right. months in spring of next year. And also more mixtures of fuel and different systems need to be tested as well. You know, what I'm always struck by is the fact that, I mean, Branson back in 2010 said he might be, you know, flying in orbit with his son by 2012. I actually spoke to him in 2012. He said that they would be doing it by the end of 2013. And it wasn't just mm -hmm. his ambition to travel up in space for passengers. He actually saw this as being a major game changer for the whole uh, commercial air travel industry. Take a look and take a listen uh, to what he told me back at the Farnborough Air Show in 2012. This could be the start of, you know, sending people from, you know, say Great Britain to Australia in three or four hours. So for years now, Branson is saying that this will be done in a sort of a 12-month horizon. Obviously, uh, the tragic accident on Friday pushes that uh, horizon back even further. Who are some of the other players here in this space, and who's sort of leading the pack? Well, clearly he's the pioneer, and as a result of that, he was able to garner some 800 willing people who are believe in him, believe in his mission to put people in space. He's already collected some close to $80 million as a result of that. He's a pioneer, according to Marco at the Teal Group, but not just that. The other three players include Xcore Aerospace, Sierra Nevada, as well as Blue Origin. It'll be interesting to see who exactly maintains uh, the number two status because number one, of course, perhaps going to Virgin Galactic. But if you take a look at Xcore Aerospace, for example, um, according to Marco, they've done some test flights, but they're not there's not much of a track record as of yet. They haven't given a timetable. Their biggest issue is, of course, funding, because they're not backed by billionaires. So no, and, and they're not quite yet selling uh, tickets on their spaceship for $200,000. Yeah, uh, no one's really given a clear uh, timetable. If you take a look at Sierra Nevada, they're working on uh, their version called the Dream Chaser. They didn't get a contract from NASA when NASA gave money out a couple months ago, but they have met all of NASA's requirements. And according to Teal Group, this is probably one of the safest. They've done several tests. And lastly, you have Blue Origin which, of course, is backed by Jeff Bezos. And in true Amazon style, he's offering the low-cost option. But again, he hasn't given <laughs> a it. timetable. No doubt, a very important yeah. issue. And it looks like the industry is going to take a hit. And, and of, of course, uh, after all the, after the tragic accident, much more likely that regulators will get involved, which will likely slow everybody's timetable down as well. But that's uh, a good thing. The fact that the regulators are looking into this with a very prudent lens is important because safety is of yes. the most utmost concern. Of course. Uh, Bloomberg's Mia Saini, yeah. thank you so much.